With Falcons, there are sort of two main schools. You've got pursuit hawking and you've got game hawking. We use drones for this and we've been using drones and kites for many years um, in this process. But it's a, a, a much easier process to get used to because a drone is a cinch to fly unless you're David. One of the things that we've been playing with this year that's been really impressive is a Rokro and it's basically a, a remote controlled plane and what it has is an EDF so it's got a ducted fan so unlike all the propulsion methods we've had before which has either been a petrol engine or it's been a propeller it's a lot safer because obviously with a petrol engine you've got the fumes to consider with the birds following it and with a propeller you've got to worry about the birds flying into it and, and hitting the propeller with this everything's encapsulated and enclosed and it's got some superb speed and brilliant maneuverability and i've only been flying it for a few weeks and it, it's it's yeah it's taken me back to being a kid again because i've had to go back get a simulator, play on the simulator for a little while. It's taken me a bit longer than I thought to get used to it and then come out and start flying it. Once I was got reasonably proficient then we started some of the young falcons on it but once you start it is brilliant fun. And for training lots of young falcons it is, it is proving a brilliant little tool because you can come out um, and train four or five on it in quite quick succession. So you can see it's a, a bit of a battered and bruised crow. You can see all the, the glue marks and whatever else. And that really is part of the beauty of the Rokro system in that you can repair it in the field, you can glue it up. So if you have an accident, there's not a lot that you can't really do to get it back and flying within a few minutes again. So it's a very fast reactive glue. But we've got a, a nice padded head here and that's where we're just going to put the food reward. We'll put the wings on again in a second and just do the pre-flight checks before we fly. And then if you look down here, you've just got the the EDF down there as our method of propulsion and then a big set of wings. Uh, I will admit that this is my second set of wings unfortunately so um, in the, um, the learning to fly stage I managed to, uh, to damage it quite badly and then I've got one particular falcon at the moment that is um, quite adept at um, coming in quite hard and smashing it. Oh look at that come in! No! Oh! oh. She reminds me a bit of um, Pebbles, or is it, was it Bam Bam in the Flintstones? It is just come in and thwack it. So, uh, no, we've, the main ones that we're flying at the Rokro are a couple of Jurs and a female Jursaker. And the Jurs are just starting out, the Jursaker's coming on quite well. So, hopefully, within the next few days, the Jurs are going to be on it um, in a little bit of a better form as well. But the, the Jursaker's picking up, I think she's on day seven at the moment. Um, but it, it just, from traditional training methods, it's amazing watching how a, a young falcon comes on and just learning some of the different techniques that can take them quite a lot longer when you're actually in a, a hawking scenario to learn some of those different techniques. For me, it's quite enlightening and just seeing how you can use new technology and how it can open up a completely different vista onto your falconry and revitalize it a little bit. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people think it's gimmicky, a lot of people are, are not overly keen on it. But I think yeah, it's part of modern day life. You have to adapt and change um, and try new things. So that's what we're doing here. And um, so far I've been very impressed and I think there's, uh, there's a lot further we can go with it. So the one we're going to do to the drone now is, uh, we've called him James. Don't know why James, it was just, that was his, it just suited him when he was running around. He just seemed like a James. But we're just getting him going for a little bit of game hawking. So we're training him to the drone and he's just at the stage now where he's going up yeah, okay, so to a, a very good height onto the, uh, the chute. And then we'll be weaning him off, hopefully, onto game as soon as the season starts. So the falcon comes in. This line is attached down to the lure and then 
when the falcon tugs it, we've got a little magnet there. It releases that, the chute comes out, and then envelops in the wind. Never. How can she be there already? Man, she's going for it now. Right, ready? Gonna hit it now. Boom. <coughs> You're a proud daddy. I don't know about a proud daddy, but I'm definitely a proud row crow fly. <laughs> it definitely takes some um, concentration to try and fly that and keep an eye on the falcon, but as I say, it is brilliant fun. And I mean, again, this is what I love about you know, modern falconry and just seeing everything evolve. It, it allows us to continue to practice our sport, which is the oldest hunting sport that there is, whilst using modern day inventions. And it's that sort of parallel evolution that I really love, that it enables us to improve our birds and improve what we do. And it's, it's one of those sports that you continually learn. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it, you're always learning and always hopefully improving. Um, and that, that's it for me, really. It's, uh, it's just a, another, another tool in the box that allows you to, to continue you know, your improvement within the sport. And again, it's a, a new skill set and something fun. But um, yeah, I mean, if I, can, if I can learn to do it and uh, we can pull it off, then pretty much anybody else can.